joining you're watching life in christ and you are on cmtv right now on your channel selection and i am reverend betram senior pastor of eternal life ministry we're talking about the only work god wants you to do and i said you can send your questions and sms and i'm here to receive and i've heard somebody is just sending a greeting please when you send your sms tell me your name where you're coming where you're writing from your name and what you're writing from you can send your questions and your prayer request and send your contributions to the broadcast of today it's amazing to have you communicate with us it's amazing to have you send your messages and we are going live we were talking before we go on the break about what it means to believe if i be a man of god and and i'm doing the works of god objectively it doesn't mean i'm doing the work of god subjectively the objective and subjective execution of divine assignment are different as i explain you would understand not all who claim to be christians are christians they go to church some they open the bible they read the answer, amen. And when you hear a pastor say, answer loud, amen. A long, amen. They shout the loudest. Some shout the longest. And you and I know that in church we cast out demons. <laughs> so even demons go to church. Right? What makes the difference? Jesus said through John in John chapter 1 from verse 11 he said he came to his own and his own did not receive him did not paralambano but as many as believed him to them he gave the right to become sons of God the believe there is lambano His own did not receive him. The word there is paralambano. They did not associate the Greek word that is paralambano. They did not associate. They did not welcome the idea. Many knew him, it was true. They didn't welcome him. But it was his own he came to. But as many as believed him, he gave the right to become sons. How many times has God spoken to you his will and you told the person by you, I must leave Mandatin in Pigeon. First leave me first with that Bible. First leave church aside as we make the slangs. I want to tell you that's unbelief. How many times have you even had the opportunity to have a man of God or an ordinary person want to talk to you about God and you are not even ready to hear him when you had the opportunity to hear him? That's not even belief yet. But we start to believe when we begin to associate, when we begin to allow the atmosphere when we begin to accept and associating doesn't mean believing going to church doesn't mean you believe in Jesus saying amen because everybody said amen doesn't mean you believe in Jesus bowing down your head because everybody bows down their head doesn't mean you believe in Jesus so he said John says but as many as believed him to them he gave the right to become sons the right the offer Authority, the access into the depths of God. So what is this belief? Belief is the Greek word pistis. Pistil. It means to allow yourself, your senses, your logic, your imagination, your heart, 
to be led, to be influenced by what you associate with or give yourself to. To allow yourself to be led, to be influenced, your course of action and your conclusion to be determined by what you've given yourself into. That's what it means to believe. So what did Jesus mean when he said, for the work that God, want, God wants you to do is to believe in him whom he said. How can belief become work? Listen. Our righteousness is but a filthy rag before God. There is nothing anybody in this world can do to make God love them more. And there is nothing you can do to make God love you less. There is nothing you can do to impress God, which you call work for God, outside belief. There is no tears enough to move God to answer your prayers. I know what it means to cry. I know what it means to pray prayer. And you don't get the response. God isn't moved by tears. God isn't moved by how much we try to impress him or to prove ourselves working. God isn't moved by how much results you have gotten. He's not moved by that. God isn't moved by how much you've tried. God is moved by how much you believed, even if you could not do much. God is not impressed by how much you think you've done or achieved. Ah. Let me read to you what Solomon says. I think I shouldn't conclude in my own words. Let me, let me go to the Old Testament first. So that you will understand that I'm not just talking in the perspective of Christianity. Verse 14 of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Solomon says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Apostle Paul begins to speak in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 15. He said, your body is the temple of God. And he begins to admonish the believer to believe in God and to walk and lead life according to God's prescription, not according to your decisions. And he says, if any man does work, which is not according to the command of God, for you who are saved, you are going to be rescued, but there will be nothing that you have left as establishment. There is nothing that is left for you as a reward for the works you did because God's judgment is going to consume by fire every work that it in order. So I'm going to be praying with you and praying for you that the Lord will open your heart and give you strength to believe. For no one confesses Jesus as Lord except by the Spirit of God. So in whatever way you've been blocked, in whatever way you have pressed and crossed your line, I'm going to pray for you. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 that those who are in the world might believe. I'm going to be praying for you that you too might believe and be saved. That you too might believe in God and be brought into the light of the expectation of God. The judgment of God shall come. And the exemption from judgment shall be those who believe in God. Those who allow themselves, their hearts, your imagination, your logic, all your grammar and education, your wealth, everything that you have, everything that you know, everything that you do, you allow it to be influenced by God. Let the course of your action be determined by God's conclusion, not just your desire. And it begins to be work. 
To shun down your senses, to shun down your own desires, to shun down your passions, that the voice of God may speak when yourself, your pride wants to speak. It becomes work to shun down your anger that the conclusion of God should come forth. You know how it feels. Let's talk about the cross. Easter. Happy Easter is Easter Monday. The offended bend it down and paid the price that the offender should have paid so that him and the offender can once again live together. That is what Jesus did on the cross. And he rose from the dead to conclude, to finalize everything that he did as concerning Tetelesta when he said it is finished. So man sinned against God and man had to pay the price. And I preached this message, message in church on Sunday. Man wasn't paying the price to God. God doesn't take delight in blood. God doesn't drink blood. He's not a blood drinker. The law was the soul that sin shall die. Don't eat from this tree. Or if you eat of the tree of the good of life, you shall die. That was it. That was the system God placed. So let's stay together. Let's be in fellowship. But please don't go here. If you go here, we can no longer be in fellowship. You shall die. We will not be in fellowship. So if you lose your fellowship with me, you are going to die. The loss of touch between man and God is the result of physical death. Physical death is not actually the death God is talking about. Death is a state of separation with God. A state of separation from God. So if you have not believed in Christ, you are still dead. You are not alive yet. No matter the money you have, no matter the, your level of education, no matter the place you find yourself, if you don't allow your life to be led and to be ruled by Jesus, you're dead. You're a breathing creature. What you have, the life you have is called suke. It's the life to every mortal flesh. It's okay. Before God, you are not alive. Before the standards of men, you seem alive. Before the standards of men, you seem rich. But before God, Revelation chapter 3, right down when you read from verse 14, before you get right to verse 20, where Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. He says, you think that you are rich, but you are poor. Oh, you say to yourself, you are rich. The parable of the rich man, he had amassed, filled his barn and said, let me eat now. Then God said, you fool, today you will die. You think you are so wealthy, you, you think you are strong, you think you are self-sufficient. The greatest temptation we have is the things we can do. And the things we think we have is the greatest deception. You have nothing if you do not have the love of God. You are nothing and you are going nowhere if you have not believed in God. I don't care what you think. I don't know about your philosophy. It's a truth. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, you can change it. Jesus told them, I have come and I'm presenting you the truth and you believe that you will die in your sins. He spoke to them. John 3, 16, when he says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that day that believe in him should not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And God has sent his son. Some refuse to believe because the one walk on in darkness. You love your pleasure. You love your, your intelligence. You love your prowess. And you, you've seen so much failure. You've seen so much deception in those who claim to be, to be Christian. Christianity is a one-on-one -on -one encounter with God. From this moment, I want you to begin to pray. If this thing is true, ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask for an encounter with God and start seeking him. It's Jesus we are talking about. And so, man couldn't pay the price of that fellowship. They lost touch with God. And so, the penalty was death. But if man is eternally separated from God, he will never, God will never achieve what he wanted. So God kept man from the tree of life so that he doesn't eat that tree of life and experience immortality in the state of separation from God. So God shuns man from the tree of life. A man can die, can pay the price. God was offended in the sin of Adam. All wrongdoing is sin. Adam did wrong to God. Adam did wrong to the fellowship they had. He himself couldn't pay the price. So God himself, in the person of Jesus, had to come down, live as man, so that he can pay the price man ought to pay with respect to the system that had been set in place, which they both were living by. That fellowship. 
So Jesus, God was paying the price. I'm giving you an example of believing in God with the work we are doing. Jesus paid the price. God paid the price man ought to pay because if man did pay that price, man would have lived. Man would have been eternally separated from God. So Jesus is paying the price. He pays the price. He pays the price, but he has eternal life in him. So he pays the price, but the Spirit of God raises him from the dead. So he is alive. But the man that was the sinful man, the man that was separated from God, the man that fell from God is dead. He is dead. He is no longer alive. Everything is obliterated. So the man who is alive now is a man that is new in God. That's why they call it new creation. And until you have the life of Christ, you are dead in Adam. We only come alive when we come in Christ. So Apostle John says, whosoever has the Son of God has life. Whosoever does not have the Son of God in him doesn't have life. And there's no way you would have the Son of God except you believe. I don't know your religion. I don't know your walk of life. But until you have Jesus, you're a breathing creature. This is an opportunity you have. The only word God wants you to do is to believe in him. To believe in Jesus. To allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And so, imagine the work it takes that you are offended. You have to calm down the pride. You have to calm down the pain. You have to calm down the grief. You have to calm down the malice. Because the word of God says, vengeance is the Lord's. And you are offended. And by the will of God, by the leading of the Spirit, you have to make peace. An example of how it works with God is that God was offended. Yet God himself came down, paid the price so that he paid the price of the offender. So that he and the, the offender can live together. So somebody offends you, you pay the price for the offense so that you and that offender can live together to make peace. That's one of the costs or that's one of the works what it means to believe God. To allow the word of God to take place. Sometimes you have to let go. Letting go is the work God wants you to do. To let go and let God. Let go of, of, of wealth. Let go of your knowledge. Let go of the things you think about yourself. And let God in you, let God for you, take his place and have his way. That's the work God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Is that what you've been doing? I can be a pastor and I'm preaching, but I'm not doing the work of God. I'm doing the work for God, but I'm not, I'm not doing the work of God. Until I'm doing what God wants me to do, until I'm working with belief, with submission of my will, with submission of my desires, not working in deception, until I'm working in total submission, I'm not working in belief. I'm working in unbelief. When you know the truth and you refuse to walk in it, it's called unbelief. When you do not do the truth, it's called doubt. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you who want to receive the life of Christ. You're just a breathing creature if you don't have his life. And the only work God wants you to do is to believe in Jesus. We just read from Solomon. Fear God. That's the whole duty of man. Fear God. Obey his instructions. Follow his directions. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me shall never walk on in darkness. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. He is the only light of the world. What other light do you want to follow? There are not many ways to God. New Age may say it, motivational speaking may say it, and the culmination for a one world religion will tell you that other religions are ways to God. <laughs> no, other religions are just expressions in which the human heart gets to acknowledge the fact that he, he, he is in need, he is in need of a superior authority. For there is a Godship vacuum in the hearts of man that makes man yearn back to him. It's not a way to God. Spiritism, spiritual practices are openings and allowances that God gave to man to be able to rule creation. The ability to operate the spirit doesn't mean you are, you are in tune with God. In tuneness with God only comes through Jesus, nowhere else. Hallelujah. And that's the work God wants you to do. We are coming to the end and I'm praying for you. You want to believe in Jesus. Where are you? Are you very poor? 
Now he didn't come for the rich, he came for the whole world. Has poverty made you reject God? Listen, your life on earth is temporary. It's not compared to what awaits you. This life is very short. Death is short. Sin is the cause. But Jesus Christ is the cure. I bring you the cure. Believe in God. Hallelujah. I want you to join me. Let's pray. We're going to brief break after the prayer. And we'll come back and I'm going to have a word of benediction with you. I'm going to be reading a few of the messages that have come in from our audience. For you who want to believe in Jesus, just pray after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Today, I believe in you. I'm familiar. But today, I believe in you. I receive you as the Lord of my life. You paid the price to keep me in tune with God. I receive that life this moment in my spirit. Help me to know you more and to serve God in you. I receive your life. And I accept that you are my own and I am your own from this day on. I repent of all my sin. I choose not to go my own way. That I may go your way. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your life. Amen. I want to thank God for you if you just prayed that prayer. Please don't forget to send me a text through the number displayed on your screen. WhatsApp or SMS. You can also call after the broadcast and I'll be able to talk with you. And I'll be talking with you. I want to share with you more. Even if you think you know, there's always much, much, there's always much to know. And I pray that you would embrace this work of God. Have you been too busy in church? Have you been too, been too busy with life? Are you working as a civil servant? Are you working as a businessman? Are you working in belief? If only you can hear the spirit of God, even in business, you can do the work of God. Even in business, you can do the work of God. If you believe in him, if you follow his instructions, obey his instructions and follow his direction, and you need mentorship if you can't go on your own, and we're going to go in a break. We'll come back. We'll have a word of benediction and read a few messages. And we'll have it as a wonderful day. So let's be on a break. We'll come back after a few seconds. Don't stay long. Stay tuned. If you're just tuning in, we are on our benediction on our Life in Christ live broadcast on CMTV. And we are talking about the only work God wants you to do is to believe in him whom he sent, and that's Jesus. We read from Solomon out of Christianity. Jesus had not come at the time of Solomon. And we said Solomon is the wisest man, wisest king that had ever lived apart from Jesus. His wisdom was extraordinary. And we said he was one of the richest man or men that had ever lived on planet Earth. He was a king. He was a scientist. He was a man broad in all knowledge. He knows what it means to enjoy life. Everything that surrounds wine, women, money, fame. He had exploited all those dimensions. And Solomon concludes in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 13. that this is the conclusion of the whole matter. When he says life is vanity, everything is meaningless. He said fear God and serve him. So we are looking at a man that has enjoyed the scopes and the spans of life. To you who think you don't hammer, you want to hammer. The conclusion of life is fear God. It's nothing to do when you gain the world and lose your soul. Are you too poor? I know poverty is a very difficult thing to endure. 
But the most important thing about life is not how much rich you are on the earth. Because life is short. Death is sure. Sin is the cause. But Jesus is the cure. The life on earth we have, Apostle Peter says, is just a shadow. It's just, it's just a, in a smoke. It's like a flower. The days are short compared to eternity. The whole work that we must have to do is to believe. And to believe means to allow your heart, your flesh, your wealth, and everything about you to be controlled, to be ruled, to be influenced, to be guided by the will of God, by Jesus Christ. There is no way you will allow or believe in God except you walk in the Spirit of God. So you need the Holy Spirit. You need Jesus in order to fear God. You need Jesus in order to serve God. The only work God wants you to do is not to do works, is to believe. If there is anything you are doing, it should do out of, it should be done out of an influence of the Spirit. How then does belief get to be work? It's work because you have to shun down yourself. And I just spoke, for example, I used the example of the cross. You are offended. You pay the price of the offender so that you and the offender can continue living together. It's work. It's work against anger. It's work against grief. It's work against strife. But that is what the belief in God produces. The Spirit of God is a blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. You are not making peace with the devil. You are making peace with sons of God. You are making peace because of the salvation of men. But when it means chasing the devil out, there's no peace for the wicked. There's no peace for the devil. And no man is an enemy, but the spirit at work in men is what is an enemy to you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it takes a lot of work to allow yourself to allow the word of God to have its way. And the only work God wants you to do for him is not the activities you are doing. But to allow him to influence you. Because there are many who think they are doing the work of God but they are walking in unbelief. When you want to serve God your style, your way, your time. You are doing your own work, not the work of God. You have to serve God, God's way, God's time. And with God's resource. You don't decide. You don't determine how your walk with God goes. And that's what is work. And except you receive the kingdom as a child. With childlikeness, not childishness. You can't enter in. Allowing yourself to be influenced. Allowing yourself to be naive. Even if the command of God is difficult. Just allowing him to be on the seat is all the work God wants. When you do that as a minister of God, we won't struggle with fasting and prayers. We won't struggle with hearing from the Spirit. We shall begin to do ministry and do the work of God with extreme excellence. And result, physical result, is not what shows God's result, but what God concludes with you that you have done out of an acceptance of his will. Physical wealth and riches is not what impresses God, but what you get because you walked in belief with God. And I pray for you this hour. The blind man said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I'm praying for you that the Lord will help you in any area that you are living in unbelief. That you have neglected his word. Let an energy come upon you even from this hour. That your eyes will be open. Your ears will be open. That you won't walk in blindness and deafness. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light this hour. I pray that you will believe God and know the hope of his calling in your life. I pray that you will answer his voice to his voice. I pray that you will associate with the word of God and with the persons and the messengers he sends to you. I pray that your senses will be open that you may receive his command and see his direction and walk in fear and that you may do the work of God with extreme excellence in the name of Jesus. Whatever castle you built, whatever palace you built for yourself, God's word is eternal. I pray you will be able to cast them down. If casting them down is what it takes for you to do the work of God, for you to believe God, for you to express your concern of God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed with all blessings. You are blessed with all blessings. You are lifted up. 
The only one God wants you to do is to believe in him. And I pray that you will believe, that you will grow in your belief, that you will grow in how much you have left yourself to be influenced by God. Jesus was crying at Gethsemane. He said, Lord, let this cup of suffering pass me by. May I not suffer. And then he said, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. That's the only work God wants you to do. God wants you to allow his will to be done, irrespective of how excruciating the process or the pain can be. I have the freedom to go about working money and to leave church work. If I want to get too rich, very rich, it's possible. There are principles, there are roots. But I sacrifice. That the will of God through my life, in my life, can be fulfilled. That's the work God wants us to do, to believe. Results, physical results, of what men want to see is not what means you are working for God, or with God, sorry. It's not what means you believed in God. To accept that Jesus is Lord doesn't mean you have believed in him. To accept that God exists, God find God day, doesn't mean you believed in him. But when you allow yourself to be controlled by his word, that is what it means. And today you've heard his word. I pray that you will open your heart. You've heard his word. Do not harden your heart. There's grace for you. There's victory for you. There is power for you to live the fullness of God's spirit. May he express himself through you in the name of Jesus. If your message is coming right now and I've not responded to it, you are going to receive the confirmation of reception. And I'm going to respond to you after the broadcast. But now we are rounding, rounding off. And it's our Life in Christ broadcast on CMTV every Mondays at 5 p.m. GMT plus one. It was a blessing having you. And I want to invite you. If you want to join me on any counseling, you can meet me on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. at Eternal Life Ministry Auditorium, directly behind Kojeni Bondumaboya. Remember, it's the Life in Christ broadcast on CMTV. And I've always been your host, Reverend Betramgin, your senior pastor of Eternal Life Ministry. Every time I come on TV, the church is praying for you. And someone was praying for you today. Someone is praying for you. Whether you are watching this now or after this time that we are broadcasting live, God purposed it for you to hear. And I want to invite you, if you need any time of prayers, you can always join me on Friday in prayer meetings. Or as well, you can join me in counseling hours and talking hours from 4 p.m. on Friday. 5 o'clock is a prayer time. We can always talk and share the word of God. If there is anything that you need, any question you have to ask, don't hesitate to text me. I would be there to pray with you. I would be there to talk with you. Serving in the vineyard. You can also partner with this program if you want to see it go better or you want to see us go to different dimensions. You are free to do so. Just send us a text on the screen. God bless you. We are going to have a Bible survey seminar this Saturday at CMTV conference room right here. There will be a behind Eta Palace Moliko Boya on Saturday at 12 p.m. where we are dissecting truths of the Bible, contemporary issues of the Bible. For those who know how to read, those who don't know how to read, we are going to delve into mysteries. We've been gone three months and it's been amazing. You can join us that time. You can as well text the number that is on your screen if you want to know more and I'm going to explain. Once again, I commend you to the safekeeping of God. And I pray that his grace will keep you in belief. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit will remain with you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will grow in your belief. That you will not only lambano, but you will kata lambano. You will comprehend what is the dimensions of God's love for you. In the name of Jesus. Remember, the only word God wants you to do is to believe in him. It's going to be a rebroadcast of this series within the week. And I'm waiting to see you again. Jo join me live next week, Monday, at 5 p.m. Remember, don't forget to tune to CMTV next week, Monday, 5 p.m. We are going to be sharing greater mysteries in the name of Jesus. God bless you. And I wish you a very splendid evening in Jesus' name. See you. Stay tuned to CMTV.